اللہ رب العالمین الصلاۃ والسلام علی رسول الکریم اما بعد فاعود بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم یا ایھا الذین آمنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون سبحان ربک رب العزت عما یصفون والسلام علی المرسلین والحمد للہ رب العالمین My dear respected brothers, elders and sisters, the greatest quality a Muslim can behold and strive for in this dunya, it is taqwa. Many a times in the glorious Quran and many a hadith, and in many a hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has emphasized on this attribute and quality. That's why in the old days, when anyone used to go to a saint, holy person, or a learned person and ask for some advice, the advice they would give them would be very precise, specific, small, and very easy to remember. They would say, Ittaqullah fi Allah Rabbul Izzat. The more a person fears Allah Rabbul Izzat, the more a person has the conscience of Allah Rabbul Izzat in his life, the more a person will be obedient to Allah Rabbul Izzat, and the more he will restrain from disobeying and committing sin. Allah Rabbul Izzat, the verse which I recited in the glory, the verse which I recited in the khutbah, Allah Rabbul Izzat mentions. That fear Allah Rabbul Izzat like it is Allah Rabbul Izzat's haq, right to be feared. And do not die but a Muslim. And a Muslim means here a person in total submission to Allah Rabbul Izzat. Do not die but in the state where you have totally submitted yourself to Allah Rabbul Izzat. So from this verse we understand until a person does not totally submit himself to Allah Rabbul Izzat, we cannot achieve taqwa in its highest sense until we do not submit until we do not sub submit ourselves we cannot achieve taqwa to its highest sense this is a quality to achieve taqwa that we have to submit ourselves to the decree of allah rabbul izzat someone asked hasan basri what is the reason and what, uh, what are those qualities that have made you so pious and righteous? Hassan Basri, he said four things. Number one, he says, I have understood that whatever provisions Allah Rabbul Izzat has destined in this dunya for me, no one can snatch those provisions from me. No one can snatch those provisions from me and they cannot be given to anybody else but me. So my heart is content. Number two, I have understood there are some things that people cannot do for me. I will have to do them myself. So I have started to do them. That is a'mal as-saliha. No one is going to perform our salat for us. No one will give our zakat for us. No one will perform our hajj for us. No one will fast for us. No one in general will do anything pious for us or righteous for us. That you give this charity on my behalf. Why shouldn't that person give charity on his behalf? Everyone is in need of ajr and reward. So I have understood. There are some things that people, not, not, people will not do for me. So I have started to do them myself. Number three, I have understood that Allah Rabbul Izzat is watching me. And because of this, this has stopped me from disobeying Allah Rabbul Izzat. This has stopped me from doing anything wrong. And number four, I have understood that death is waiting for me. So I have started my preparation to meet my Rabb. I have started my preparation to meet my Rabb. Death is waiting for everybody, if not today, tomorrow, if not tomorrow, next year, sometime down the track. 
we have to prepare for death ourselves umar bin abdul aziz radiyallahu an it is said he had a kaniz and one day she came entered the house he performed two rakat nafal in the corner and she was so tired she fell asleep and in her sleep she started to cry and then she suddenly got up so umar bin abdul aziz said why are you crying she said i have saw a very strange dream he said what dream have you saw she said i saw that it is the day of judgment qiyamah whatever life you will live you will see that life in your dreams you live a holy life you will see angels in your dreams you will see jannah in your dream you live a worldly life you will see cars and houses is whatever you live however we live our life conduct ourselves throughout the day that what we will see in our dreams so obvious that's nature that's the nature of dreams whatever life you live that was we will see in our dreams you live a holy life allah will unveil himself allah will unveil the unseen there's not one person two people hundreds and thousands of people have seen their jannah in their dream hundreds and thousands the prophet saw his jannah he saw the jannah of sayyidina umar as well these hadiths have been documented the prophet of allah saw the jannah of umar in his dream this was what they were thinking about day and night their jannah the ultimate goal whatever we think about during the day that's what we will see at night so she saw this dream and when she woke up she was crying so sayyidina umar bin abdul aziz he inquired why are you crying she said i saw that it is the day of judgment jahannam is brought forward and jahannam is pleading and crying to its inhabitants hal min mazid hal min mazid i need more and then the bridge of sirat is placed on jahannam the bridge which everyone will have to cross the more iman and amal you have the easy it will be for us to cross the bridge there will be some people that will cross the bridge with the speed of lightning the iman and amal will be so strong that the iman will extinguish the fire of jahannam allah the iman will be the means of jahannam being extinguished so strong iman the nur the nur of the iman will put will put out the fire of jahannam that's why we they will cross the pulsarat with the speed of lightning she she said jahannam was crying out pleading to its inhabitants and then malik bin abdul marwan was summoned she says sayyid anwar bin abdul aziz says then what happened he said malik bin abdul marwan he was ordered to cross the pul sirat the bridge he stepped on the bridge started to walk he did not get that far the bridge tilted and he fell in then he said what happened she said then walid bin abdul malik was summoned he was summoned to do the same thing to cross the bridge he placed his foot on the bridge started to walk he did not go that far the bridge tilted and he fell in he said then what happened she said then sulman bin abdul malik was summoned he was ordered to cross the bridge he did not go that far as well the bridge tilted and he fell in when he heard this sayyidina umar bin abdul aziz started to cry profusely and he this said, said then what happened she said then you were summoned as soon as he heard his name umar bin abdul aziz was summoned he started to scream he fell unconscious and started to roll on the floor i would like to invite every brother and sister to leave to read the swane 
to read the biography of Murbin Abdul Aziz, then we may realize that without taqwa, you cannot survive in this dunya or the hereafter. It is easy to say the name of Umar bin Abdul Aziz on the tongue, very easy. Until you do not understand what this person left. His sacrifice and his change. When she said Umar bin Abdul Aziz, that's why it is said the second Umar of this Ummah, it is Umar bin Abdul Aziz. The second Umar. It is said before becoming the Khalifa. Forget about his clothes, the scent he used to use. It was so expensive. People used to bribe the laundry men to wash their clothes with the clothes of Umar bin Abdul Aziz. So the scent can be transferred. And that scent used to remain on the clothes for a year. You can imagine. Today you can buy the expensive, most expensive cologne outside. It does not last a couple of hours. And this scent used to remain on the clothes for a year. And it was not the real thing. It was the scent that has been transferred. Like it is said about the Prophet of Allah. Wherever the Prophet of Allah used to walk, he used to leave a fragrance behind, a smell behind, a beautiful smell. It is said, Sayyidina Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, when he slipped, we do not say mistake, my dear respected brothers and elders, we do not say mistake. Prophets do not make mistakes. This was the slip of Sayyidina Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. He cried so profusely out of the fear of Allah Rabbul Izzat. This created small fountains, and from these fountains, Allah Rabbul Izzat created beautiful smelling flowers. The beautiful scent which we get from the flowers, these are the tears of Sayyidina Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. When she said, it is said when Sayyidina Adam made this slip, after that day he never raised his head up at the sky. He never looked up at the sky after that day, never. He lived for 300 years after this slip, but he never raised his head. Once the angels were longing to see the face of Sayyidina Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. So they requested to Allah Rabbul Izzat, we want to see the beautiful face of Sayyidina Adam, but he does not raise his head. So Adam alayhi salatu was, so Allah Rabbul Izzat sent Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam with a message. Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam came down with the message and he said to Adam, Why is it that you do not look up at the skies? What is the reason you have stopped looking up at the skies? Sayyidina Adam alayhi salatu wasalam replied, out of remorse and embarrassment, that I committed a slip. Allah. Out of embarrassment and remorse, I do not raise my head. It is said on the day of judgment, inda rabbihim. That on the day of judgment, the sinful, they will not able to raise their heads. The people that did not perform salah will not able to stand still, straight. It is said, they will have a iron rod pierced in their back, which will stop them from standing up straight. So Umar bin Abdul Aziz, when he hears that, he, she said, I saw you, that you were summoned by Allah Rabbul Izzat. He started to scream and he fell unconscious and he was rolling on the ground. And then she went up to him and she said, oh, Umar bin Abdul Aziz, but you were salvaged by Allah. You crossed the Sirat without any problem. But because his name was mentioned, he could not control his emotions. He went crazy. And this went on for, us for some time. 
Once he said to his wife, Oh wife, I desire to eat some grapes. That his life before taking this responsibility was that the scent he used to use was worth hundreds of dirham and dinar. So there was no question that food is a question or problem from Urm bin Abdul Aziz. Food was no problem. Once he was walking down the street, an old man approached him and he said, Oh son, your trousers, you are dragging your trousers along the ground. This is a sign of arrogance. He grabbed the old man and he said, Oh old man, if it was not of your white beard, I would have took your head off. He said, if it was not of your white beard, I would have took your head off. Don't you know who you are speaking to? This is Umar bin Abdul Aziz. He's not a normal person. Be careful what you say, he said to the old man. <coughs> but when he changes, when he reforms himself, a time comes where he says to his wife, I desire to eat some grapes. So he says to his wife, have you got any money so I can buy some grapes? She said, I haven't got a dirham at home. Forget about a dirham. The smallest currency I haven't got at home. What about yourself? He goes, where have I got any money? She goes, you are the Khalifa of the, you are the Khalifa of the time and you have no money. You haven't even got sufficient funds to buy some grapes for yourself. He said, I would desire, I would like to take this desire in my grave, then forfeit the right of the Muslims. Allah Akbar. I would desire to go in the grave without eating graves, then to forfeit and forsake the right of the Muslims. Every, every person of my public has a right on this wealth, not only me. I would like to forfeit this desire, then to be dragged on the day of judgment with the chains wrapped around his neck. When Umar bin Abdul Aziz عن, became a Khalifa, the first thing he did, he did, he started reformation with his own family. The problem with us today is we want reformation from the outside, we want people to change. Reform starts from the family first. Reform has to start with the family first. The Prophet started reform with his family first. Then he preached to the people outside. Our families, they are not changed and we want to change everybody. It doesn't work like that. It is against the sunnah of the Prophet of Allah. وَأَنذِرْ أَشِيرَةَ الْأَقْرَبِينَ Allah said to the Prophet of Allah, وَأَنذِرْ أَشِيرَةَكَ الْأَقْرَبِينَ Give dawah to your family first. Invite your family first to your mission. Then invite the other people. Reform starts within a person Number one, it starts within first, and then it starts with the family, a person himself first, and then the family. So the first thing he did, the Khulafa before him that had given big blocks of land and presents to this family, he started to take them back. And he only left with them that was necessary. Whatever was sufficient for their livelihood, he left. And whatever was extra, he started to take back. He said, you have no right upon this. They were only given these blocks of lands and presents on the basis of favoritism, that they were family. They had no legitimate right upon these blocks of land or presents. And by establishing this custom and practice, the Khulafa before Umar bin Abdul Aziz, they were forfeiting the right of the public. This was not right. So he started reformation from himself first, his family. So what happened is the family got together and they appointed a Masi. We say in, in Urdu, Masi. They appointed a Masi to come to talk to Umar bin Abdul Aziz. What are you doing? So the Puppi came, yes? The elderly lady of the family, big family, 
she came and spoke to Umar bin Abdul Aziz. She said, my son, you are creating a wave of hatred in the family. You are creating a wave of hatred in the family. The family is starting to hate you. Why? Whatever the Khulufa before you gave us, you are taking back. Why don't you, whatever the Khulafa gave us, why don't you leave it with us? Why are you depriving us of these rights? They used to favor us, they used to give us blocks of land and presents. And you, you are family as well, but you are taking everything back. You are forfeiting whatever trend they set in the family. This is not right. And I am scared that if you carry on doing this, the family will rebel against you. The family will turn against you. At that time, Umar bin Abdul Aziz said, he said, look, if I am scared of any other day more than the day of judgment, if I am scared of any day more than the day of judgment, may Allah Rabbul Izzat make me see that day then, I don't care. The only day I am concerned about is the day of judgment. If I am scared of any other day, may Allah make me see that day, I don't care. Then he requested for one dirham, a piece of meat and a small fire. Now he is practically going to give her an example. A practical example. So he, or, he requests this for one dirham, a piece of meat and a small fire, a small kindled fire. These three things are brought forward. He places the dirham in the fire. When it becomes extremely hot and it becomes red, he takes the dirham out and he places on the piece of meat. And you can imagine the meat started to melt instantly. The dirham, the coin was so hot. Then he said to his auntie, Don't you ask refuge from Allah Rabbul Izzat from this? For your nephew, don't you ask Allah Rabbul Izzat refuge from this? That Allah saves me from this? I am not forfeiting the right of my family. What I am doing is, I am saving my family from the humiliation of the hereafter and the destruction of the hereafter. Because this right, this wealth which my family has been given, they have no legit, legitimate right upon that wealth. I'm saving them from forfeiting and forsaking the right of the public. I'm saving them from the humiliation of the hereafter. Now when she saw a practical example of this, she understood. Without even uttering or saying a word, she got up and left. Allah Rabbul Izzat give us the tawfiq to contemplate. Allah Rabbul Izzat give us the tawfiq to inculcate this quality of taqwa in our lives. Because without this quality, my dear respected brothers, it is impossible. Our salvation in this life and in the hereafter is impossible. Wa akhirud dawana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alim.